morning everyone welcome back good morning Alan James Julie everybody else it's nice and early um welcome back to another social hub session yeah we've had a bit of a break we've we well myself and the two Stuarts have had a, a month off from the social hub haven't we so um it's it's good to be back and uh yeah and we've got Fanula as well with us this morning from Sight and Sound as well. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to to hearing and uh, hopefully, yeah, um, yeah, hopefully delivering a, another exciting session. So welcome everyone. As always, we'll give it a few minutes before we officially kick off. A um, few uh, formalities before we do start. Um, so this morning, um, we're, we're, we're really pleased to have uh, Stuart Lawler, who's going to be leading the session. He's going to be demonstrating uh, the studio recorder software, um, and he's also going to be recording a podcast um, as part of the session. Um, so Stuart will be leading the session, but please do get involved. Um, obviously, Stuart will encourage this throughout the session, um, but please use the facilities. So we've got the chat box um, down at the bottom of the screen there, Alt and H on a Windows machine, Command and H on a Mac. Um, and please do ask any questions and Fanula and Stuart um, will keep an eye on that. Um, unfortunately, I have to duck out uh, at about 25 past 10 because I've been double booked. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to miss the majority of the session, but um, I will leave you in the capable hands of, of everybody else. Um, good, 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 good. I'll uh, yeah, we'll give it a couple, one more minute um, before we before we start. Um, good. So good morning, uh, team. How how is everybody? Doing good, good. I think Sam. Weather yeah. in Dublin is okay. It's uh, it's been really beautiful here on the east coast of Ireland in the last few days. Um, Lovely. Where Fanula and I are both based. Yeah, both in Dublin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Different parts of Dublin. No, you... Do, yeah, yeah. Well, um, Fanula's yeah. in Kildare, so she's. I'm in Kildare. Just yeah. over the border. Uh, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. How about five, Stuart? Stuart B. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's not been too bad at all. Spring is definitely here, but as we were saying before we uh, came on air there, that I think it's to get very uh, cold, and I, I think we've actually. I heard we were supposed to get snow at the Easter weekend up here. So Some very interesting weather. That. I like how we, we do this little sort of weather review before we start. Oh, we do, fun. don't we? Yeah, yeah, we like it. We like <laughs> yeah. it. We've got sort of different parts of the British Isles here. So, you know, we just just in case you were planning on travelling, not that we're allowed yet. Um, good. Yeah, but happy Thursday, everyone. It's almost the bank holiday, which is um, exciting. Um <laughs> So you're all very welcome. Um, anyway, that's just arrived, welcome to the social hub, the assistive technology social hub with sight and sound technology and Seascape, who is one of our charity partners based up in Fife in Scotland. So for anybody that's new, um, if you've not been to a social hub session before, it's pretty straightforward, really. Um, we've got um, Stuart Lawler from sight and sound who's going to be leading the demonstration. Um, which is focusing on Studio Recorder. And if anybody wants to get involved, it's absolutely encouraged to um, voice your questions, comments, observations, experiences of using uh, recording software or any other assistive technology as well um, that hopefully we can help with or share with the group. Um, good. So um, as I mentioned, I unfortunately I have to duck out um, uh, about 25 past um, or so. Before um, we kick off, I just want to plug a couple of other events uh, that are coming up. Um, so the Social Hub, obviously, is now back every two weeks after our little mini break. We had a month off. Um, so on the 15th, we've got uh, we've got the team from Sunu um, who are going to be joining us. Anybody who doesn't know about Sunu, fantastic. Um, um, they've, well, they've got a couple of different um, creations, one being a smart mobility band that you wear on, on your wrist. And it, it sends out a sonar um, wave, which then bounces off objects and um, sends a vibration to the watch. So it sort of gives you a, 
uh, object detection smart mobility band but that pairs with an app as well a smartphone app um, which is very exciting lots of navigation features so that's going to be in two weeks time the 15th and then we also have a webinar wednesday then which Stuart Lawler will be leading next wednesday okay which is the seventh yes seventh and that is going to be featuring a brand new and uh, well a uh, brand new version of a, a braille note taker called the braille send six okay which is a um we're really excited to to announce the the release of that of that um a new model good right i'm gonna um shut up now and i'm gonna hand you over to stuart who's gonna kick off and uh, introduce you to studio recorder thank you Stuart. thanks sam <clears throat> good morning everybody great to be here at the social hub again thanks to uh to stuart and sam and um it, it it's great to come along to talk i always enjoy talking about audio editing um just to give you, I suppose, a little sense for those who may not know me, I work in sight and sound technology, and one of my roles in the company is to lead on our content creation uh, in the digital space, I suppose. So that would, would involve things like podcasts and our uh, webinar series and lots of other things, I suppose, that we've been doing online very proactively in the last year. I've been playing with audio for a long time. Uh, back in the in the, I remember in the late 80s getting what was at the time a ghetto blaster, a twin deck ghetto blaster. I thought this is, it gets, life gets no better than this. I have a twin deck tape machine. And I used to start editing songs and, you know, uh, you know, maybe trying to tighten up a song or take a verse out of a song, make a song shorter and do it without having any notable sound as though it had been um, edited and, and sort of start messing around with that. And then I remember in the 90s, I had a couple of tape decks and I had one particular tape deck, which was an Iowa tape deck. And it took about half a second for the device to engage when you took it off pause. So for the, um, for the recording heads to kind of click into place and you had to be able to preempt that half second if you were doing an edit. So you needed to take account for these things. And when I look back now and I see all the stuff we did back then, that if you messed it up, tough, it was gone. Now it's so much easier. So I've been using, um, I suppose, editing tools on, on, a, on a PC for about 16, 17 years, predominantly SoundForge. And I come from a single track uh, editing um, area, I suppose. I, I haven't done much in the, um, in the multi-track space. So today we're gonna look at Studio Recorder, um, an American printing house for the blind product from Louisville in Kentucky, which was actually designed originally to create um, audiobooks. And it was their um, in-house program for their uh, staff and for their readers who wanted to read uh, audiobooks. And it became quite popular, I think, in the, in the, in the community. And it was released for, uh, commercially, I believe, about 10 years ago. And would you believe it sat there since 2014 until last year, 2020, when there was an update, uh, I think, in the autumn of last year. So I was aware of this product, but I never really looked at it because I kind of thought they mustn't be going to do anything else with it if they've left it since 2014. But they did some updates last year and I came back to look at it again and I was really interested. So what is it? It is um, a digital audio um, software to allow you to create uh, audio. And as you'll see in a couple of minutes, it is very, very good. Uh, why would we use it? So I suppose there are lots of audio editors out there. Uh, Reaper is a very accessible multi-track audio, audio editor. Um, Audacity is a, is a multi-track audio editor that's actually free. Um, SoundForge obviously is an audio editor. Um, so there's lots of stuff out there. Goldwave is another one, sorry. There's lots of stuff out there that, that blind and uh, low vision people are using. Why use Studio Recorder? For me, the reason I use Studio Recorder was because, and I've been using, as I said, SoundForge for a long time. I found in the last couple of years, the last couple of versions of SoundForge, there have been some challenges. Uh, some of the functionality that was very accessible in the past is a little more fiddly now. Uh, one example of this is mixing multiple files, and we'll talk about mixing later on. And doing really tight, um, edits I found to be a little bit challenging and I wanted a solution 
that might give me that functionality back. And Studio Recorder has done that. Now, I still use SoundForge and I'll come back and talk about why I use SoundForge a little bit later on. So I'm not getting rid of my SoundForge at all. How do I get Studio Recorder? Well, up to the end of last year, the way to get Studio Recorder was very convoluted. You had to make a call um, to Louisville, Kentucky, and um, the, you had to order the software over the phone, and then you would receive an, um, an activation code by email within 24 hours. Now you can buy it directly on the website, um, aph.org. It's in the APH catalog. You can add it to your cart and you can buy it. So I'm really glad that they're doing that. And I suppose then the next question is, how much is the software? It's 200 US dollars. That's about 174 euro, according to my Alexa this morning, and about 145 British pounds. So that's the price. Is there a demo version available? Yes, there is. You can download the actual uh, software and it will run in, it will run in full mode. Uh, the only thing you can't do is save your files. So pretty much everything I'm going to show you today, you guys can all go off and do it afterwards if you want. So that is just the intro to what Studio Recorder is. Um, I'm going to go into the demo now. There's quite a bit I want to cover. I just want to say, when I say there's quite a bit, this is by no means an exhaustive tour of Studio Recorder. And I by no means, by the way, know all about Studio Recorder. I've learned a lot about this application since I got it just after Christmas. Also, I, I really need to say that I'm not a professional sound engineer. I'm not an, a professional audio editor. I'm not a producer. I've produced a lot of stuff in the past because I'm kind of interested in that and I like editing audio. But just so that everybody's um, expectations of me are, are clear. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my JAWS and then we will open Studio Recorder and start having a look at it. So just give me one moment. Um, oh. Sam, can you allow me to share? It says the host disabled screen sharing, if that is possible. I think I'm the host now, Stuart. Yes, host. so Manula. I'll do it. Manula has the power. Thanks, Manula. Yeah, you are in okay. charge. Manula's in charge. <laughs> That'd be very nice. God to help us all. <laughs> No, it should be okay there, sir. Okay, perfect, Vanilla. Uh, so I'm going to just share my screen. Uh, sorry. Okay. Zoom web. Hopefully you're all hearing Jaws. And hopefully if it's too loud or anything, uh, Stuart, or if it's not loud enough, please feel free to, to shout. Okay, I'm going to go to the desktop where I where my studio recorder icon lives. Folder view, list view, zoom, 12 of 53. And let's press S. Studio recorder. There we go. And let's press enter. Studio recorder dash document one, MDI client. Now Doc it says document one, you may hear. Studio recorder refers to an audio file as um, a document. And this is because they're looking at this from the perspective of somebody creating a talking book. There are features built into Studio recorder that I'm not going to demo today. One of which is that you can navigate uh, an audio file by, for example, sentence or paragraph. And Studio Recorder does this by using some very clever technology by listening for how long you pause when you're doing a recording, when you're speaking. So that's why they call this a document. Um, this is a very standard application window. If we press the Alt key, Menu bar, file F. We have a menu bar. Edit, view, transport, navigate, special S. This is the options in the main studio recorder menu bar. If I press escape again. Leaving menus. I'm back to my um, opening app screen. So um, that's launching the application and we've looked at the windows. Now, uh, inserting and loading files. There are two ways to get files into studio uh, into the application, and one is to um, insert audio into an existing file, and one is to load a file from scratch. Why might you want to insert audio? Well, you might decide that a WAV file you're working on, you want to preserve um, the original, so you want to load it into a new blank file and work on it, and then save it as something else. Al uh, alternatively, you can just open a file as normal. 
Now, because uh, inserting files takes a little bit of time, I, I want to try to make this run as quickly as possible. I did a lot of, um, here's, one, here's one we made earlier uh, yesterday. So I have pre-prepared some files that we're going to work on today. So I'm gonna open the first of those now. MDI client. And I'm gonna press Control and O. Open dialog. We have a very standard open file dialog. Folder view, list view, not selected, Anthony Ruck.wav. We'll come back to Anthony Ruck.wav in a few minutes because he is the guy who's on our podcast that we have to do a little bit of editing on. But I'm going to do one called... Menu, um, uh, and dash it, leave it. I'm Folder, going to not open select, one show closing, dot, three, show intro, dot, two, wow. show close, three, show it, show rough recording, dot, rough recording. With now. I'm just pressing enter there. You may have noticed as I was moving through the files, Studio Recorder was auto playing them as I was navigating. And that can be useful or it might drive you mad. Uh, the idea is that you can hear a snap of the file you're looking at before you decide if you want to open it. And you can turn that feature on and off very easily. I should also mention there are a whole host of settings in the application, which we won't get time to look at today. And the help file, which is uh, the user guide, which comes as part of the application. I have rarely seen something that has been better written. It's a lovely HTML uh, file, clearly marked up with headings and subsections. You won't go wrong with this stuff. You really won't. Uh, the way they've laid it out is exceptional. Now I've opened a quick document that I recorded this morning, rough and ready. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like. I'm gonna hit the space bar to start playing. For people with low or no vision, assistive technology, I'm hitting the space bar again. I hope you're hearing this okay. We can assistive. So the space bar pauses and continues playing. The enter key stops and leaves the playhead at the point where I started playing. So in this instance, for people with low or no I'm vision, I'm gonna press enter. My playhead is still at the top of my screen, of my file. For people with low or no vision, Okay, so we're going to do a few really quick edits on this little piece of speech that I recorded this morning so I can show you some of the concepts. At the very beginning, there's a bit of silence and there's me taking a breath. So I'm going to press the space bar here. For and I'm hitting the space bar for people. I want to go back a little bit and I'm simply going to press the left arrow key. For, for, now, I'm, I'm hearing this very, 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 there's a very quiet breath at the beginning of the word four, when I'm saying the of four, and that's where I want to stop. So I want to remove everything before this point. So I'm going to press Control, Shift, and Home. And I'm going to press the Delete key. And now I'm going to hit the space bar. For people with low or no vision, assistive technology can, assistive technology, assistive, right. So clearly I made a bit of a, a mess of this. So we need to do a bit of tightening or editing here. There are two ways we can select um, audio that we want to manage. One is to use shift with right and left cursor keys. And this is really useful for fine selecting and we will be doing that in a few minutes. But the other is to use the left and right brackets to essentially make a block around whatever you want to select. So I'm gonna mark the audio. So let's listen to this for a sec. Technology can, for people with low or no vision, assistive technology can, Assistive technology. Assistive technology can often be... Okay, so there's three assistive technologies. I've made three attempts at this, and attempt three is the one we want. So let's go to the top again. For people with low or no vision, pause. Now I'm going to press the left bracket, and we're going to continue playing. And visually, for those who can see the screen, I think you will see a little, um, a little mark or a, a border around this wave, segment of the wave. Assistive technology can... Assistive technology. Assist now, I've gone too far. I need to arrow back a little. And I'm going to press the right bracket to end my selection. Now, I want to hear that selection. I want to hear what I selected. I'm going to press shift and space to play it. Assistive technology. Can assistive technology. Right. I think that's okay, but I want to hear it before I delete it. I could do Control-Z to undo it, but there's a nice little feature in Studio Recorder that I 
use so much all the time. It's in the transport menu. So we could press the Alt key here to get to the menu, menu bar. bar. We can press R for transport. Transport. And the feature is called Preview Delete Question. F. Preview Delete. And you get it, you can you can easily get to it by pressing the letter L. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a shortcut key, but I'm gonna actually ask them to make a shortcut key because I think this is one of the most useful features. This is like in SoundForge, there's something called pre-cut. Uh, I'm sure there's others in other audio applications. So now what it'll do is it'll play a couple of seconds before the edit and a couple of seconds after the edit and we'll see what it sounds like. So here goes. Leaving For people menus, with lower or no vision, assistive technology can often be the gateway to employment. Okay. I think it's okay. It's a bit, the assistive technology is a bit loud, but there's nothing we can do about that because that's, I didn't um, voice it very well. So we'll just press the delete key here. Blank. And I pressed delete. It didn't say delete, but it has deleted and I'll show you. For people with lower no vision, assistive technology can often be the gateway to employment. For many people, oh, there's a horrible breath there, isn't there? Let's get rid of that. Now, you have to be careful when you're getting rid of breaths, I would say. I've listened to podcasts before and, and there, was, there was one in the States a couple of years ago and it was, they used to take out every breath and it Colton. actually sounded unnatural. It sounded really unnatural. So if you're going to get rid of breaths, do it, do it sparingly, but this is a very loud one and it, it's a bit intrusive. So let's have a look. Engagement of technology with lower no vision. Assistive technology can often be the gateway to employment. Pause. So we're going to pause here and I'm going to press shift with right arrow just to get the breath. And as we press shift and right arrow, we'll hear the breath as we go along. So I've selected now. Let's play the. Oh, we've gone a bit too far. Now let's play the breath with shift and space. From beyond new I think that's all right. Let's preview it by doing our preview delete. Menu. Preview delete. Technology can often be the gateway to employment. For many people, such technology can can be all right. I think I'm happy with that. There's another fluff up now in a minute. So we'll hit delete here. Blank. And I'm just gonna do one more. And then I'm going to, we're going to move on to the podcast and the, the, the fun bit. I want to talk about Zooming. I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm deadly honest, this is true. I went through probably four years of my audio editing life with SoundForge thinking Zooming was not important, thinking it was a visual thing. So I used to see Zoom on the menu and just literally ignored it. Until one day, a fellow audio editor who was blind said something about, you're going to have to zoom in on that more. I said, what do you mean zoom in? He said, you need to tighten the selection. So zooming refers to really getting into the audio, getting in tighter to make a selection. If you had maybe a half a syllable or half a breath and you wanted to cut it out, you can tighten the selection, bring it in, in, in further to tighten it. And you can zoom in and zoom out with um, Studio Recorder by pressing F9 to zoom in and F10 to zoom out. And they're really important keystrokes, and we will come to them in a few minutes. So just we're doing, going to do one more edit here. For many people, such technology can, can be prohibitive, can be prohibitively expensive. Okay, there's a nice one. And we just do a bit of editing here. It can be prohibitive, can be, can be, can be, such technology can, 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 such people, such technology can. Now, the word can is just to the right of my cursor. So I want to make sure, I don't want this to sound kind of edited if I can get away with it. So let's see what we can do here. So we'll press the left bracket, can, can be prohibitive, can be prohibitive, can be prohibitively, okay? Prohibitive, can, 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 can. Let's play the selection now with shift and spacebar, can, can be prohibitive. There's a little breath at the end of it, and I think that's okay. So now let's preview it and see what it's like. Menu, play, preview, delete, question, employment. For many people, such technology can be prohibitively expensive. And there's a great feeling when you get a good edit, and I've just got that feeling. So that this stuff, honestly, you, we could spend hours just doing this. And when, I've, when I produce podcasts, and I've been doing podcasting for quite a while, and in my previous um, job, we used to produce a podcast every month. And I used to say to people, it would generally, we'd produce an hour of audio. I probably spent 
seven, eight hours uh, doing the edits and you know other other bits. So we we'll just hit delete here and we we'll just play that edit can be technical. Such technology can be prohibitively expensive. Okay. So we were pressing shift and right arrow. We were moving forward. We were tightening our selections. We were using the brackets to create a little uh, selection area. And then we were previewing the selection before we did anything to see what it might sound like. And if we don't like it, we can clear the selection and start again by pressing the escape key. So that's the basics of editing. But um, we're going to go on in a minute to podcasts. I just want to make sure I have covered everything on my notes here that I was going to do in that section. I have. OK, so let's close this file with Control and F4. Studio recorder dialogue. Save changes to rough recording. Love question. No. No button. We let rough recording go. MDI client. Right. We're going to create, we're going to build a podcast. Most of the work has been done, but there is a little bit of work that I need to do here, and I hope you guys will be able to help me with. Our um, remote but not restricted podcast, which is looking at higher education, um, accessibility and assistive technology is relaunching next week. And yesterday I interviewed a very nice guy about the, uh, for the podcast. And we're gonna start by doing a little bit of editing on his interview. I've done most of it, but there's, there's a few things I need to tighten up. So let's open control and O. Open. And his name is Anthony. Na not selected. So we are recording. MPI. I'm pressing enter here to open the file. Now, I didn't delete the bit at the start where I tell him that we're recording and I say, are you okay? Are you ready to start and all that? I haven't done that. So I need, to, uh, I need to delete that first of all. I also need to delete my intro and I'll tell you why I'm gonna delete my intro in a second. When I interview people for the podcast normally, I will do an intro on the day as part of the interview for their benefit, just for their benefit, just to get them psyched up and get them in the zone, I suppose, rather than just pressing the record and going, hi, Anthony, tell us a bit about yourself. I'll do a bit of a, so this week we have Anthony Rook and he's on remote but not restricted, blah, de, blah. I'm probably never actually going to use that intro. That's just for him. The intro I will use, which we'll see in a sec, is an intro I will do afterwards with music in the background. And then we will mix Anthony in as though he was with us in, on that, uh, um, at that part, waiting to join the show. Okay, so let's hit the space bar here. So we are recording and I'll do, and am I correct pronouncing your surname Rook? Uh, Rook is in, yes. Rook. Rook. So there he is chatting away to me before the recording, but I was telling him that we're recording and we're doing our, our little intro. And here is just, I'm just going to um, go a bit into this. Rook uh, is editor. in, as in but not restricted with Anthony Rook, who's CEO of Aventido, and he's an all round great guy. Now, that all that audio is not going to be used in the final podcast. So I want to get back to the top of this file. Blank. JAWS would normally say top of file, but some of my um, verbosity options are turned down. Now, I have used a feature in Studio Recorder called Marks here, and I have marked key points in the file that I need to go back to. And the first mark is where um, Anthony starts speaking <clears throat> because I want to remove everything from before that. You move through marks by pressing control page down to go forward and control page up to go back. You create a mark by, uh, at the current position in the audio by pressing the letter M for mark. And then you can name it by pressing the letter N for name. So if I press control page down, Blank. Meeting. Task. Blank. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Listen, great. This is the first mark. Uh, so he says, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So let me go back uh, up. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, sir. So I'm going to get to the, this mark again, and I'm going to delete everything before this mark by pressing Control, Shift, and Home, and then the delete key. Blank. We'll press play. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I'm going to bring that. You'll hear in a minute when we start doing our, our mixing that we're going to bring him in like that. So here's Anthony. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, there's a couple of M's and S that I've left in that I'm going to delete now. So let's go to the next mark. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, December. 
uh, December. There's an air uh, there. So let's go back a bit and listen to where it, how it comes in. December last and debating. Pleasure of participating in that event uh, last uh, December. And our uh, last, there's two airs. Uh, let's see, can we get rid of them? See, uh, uh, last event, uh, last event, participating in that event. In that event. Now there's an air. Uh, so let's just shift and right arrow. The problem with this uh, is I kind of went L, L last. So the A is joined onto the L. This is going to be very tricky to get rid of, but we'll do our best. And if it sounds too, 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 too edited, we won't get rid of it. It would be unnatural. So let's see. Uh, uh, okay, let's preview it and see what it sounds like with our transport. Menu, play, preview, delete, question. And hit enter. We had the pleasure of participating in that event uh, last uh, December no. and our CEO, Glenn Tool. So I don't like it because the end of the A uh, is still there, but it's tr joined on to the last, the la syllable. I think this is going to be tricky, but let me see. Can I zoom in on it a little bit more? I'll press F9 one, colon, one. and I'll press right arrow. Uh, I'll see the la is coming in. Let's see. I'll zoom in once more. One and then I'll in. zoom. I'll go back fractionally. Uh, and I'll preview this and see what it sounds like. Menu. Preview. Delete. delete. Point. We had the pleasure of participating in that event last uh, December. And our CEO, Glenn, took. I'm not happy with it. I can still hear it. And I don't think I can do anything else with it. So I'm going to leave it. It would sound funny to me. That's not saying that somebody listening to the podcast might ever hear it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to leave that event. Participating in that event uh, last uh, December. Now there's an air before December. That's the one I want to get rid of. Uh, that event uh, last. Uh, so I'm going to just going back with my cursor to the beginning of the air. And I'm going to shift right arrow. We're zoomed in very tightly. So I might zoom us out a wee bit. One call, one call. And. and Uh, 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 let's uh, preview it and see what it sounds like. Many preview the we had the pleasure of participating in that event uh, last December and our CEO, Glenn Tookie, and uh, it's a little bit edited, but I'm going to leave it. I'm, you guys are the only people who know this was edited when you listen to the show. So let's just delete it. It's fine. December and our, now we're going to go to the next mark. There's two more I need to fix. CEO Glenn to uh, internal sales manager, Carl Breely, internal, uh, internal, and my manager, internal, to our, uh, internal, to our key and our, I'm going to try and delete this. Uh, okay. We'll preview this. Med Member and our CEO Glenn Tookie and our internal sales manager Carl Breely and myself. Now I like that. On. That has worked. So we'll press delete. Blank. Internal sales manager off with and you. I think and I think one you more. We're interviewing um, receptive to that. Are decision makers um, receptive to that? Are okay. So this is a question I'm asking them. Are decision makers receptive? And I've said are decision makers M um, receptive? So let's. That should be an easy thing to clear. Are they receptive? Decision makers are the decision, people making the decisions. Are the decision makers uh, 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 now the makers? There's a big between makers and uh, is tight, so I'm going to zoom in a wee bit. One Let's call see, and can one we do deep. this. Selecting the air, uh, um, going a bit further. Um, let's preview it. Many previous. Are the decision makers receptive to that? Are they are they listening to you guys? Are they kind of saying, listen? Yeah, I like it. So we do that. Blank. Delete that. Receptive to that. Are they are they listening? And that's it. I just had three little edits I needed to tighten. So that bit is now fixed. So Anthony Rook's podcast, his interview rather, is fixed. Now I need to get some very important information. I need to go to the bottom of the file with control and home, control and end. Blank. And I need to uh, I need to work out what's the length of this file. I can do this by reading the status menu. In fact, there's two ways. I'll show you the two ways. So if I read the status line in JAWS, stop zero zero colon three zero colon one three point seven one. So it's thirty minutes thirteen point seven something seconds. I could also press the letter G. 
Go to time dialog. Enter timer percentage left parent absolute or relative right parent colon. Enter timer per... And the time will now display when I read the current line. Enter timer percentage left parent absolute or relative right parent colon edit 30 colon 13.710. So there we go. 13 seconds. 30 sec. 30 minutes, 13 seconds. We need to remember that. And, uh, and we'll come back to that. Um in a sec. In fact, it, in fact, it's going to be slightly longer. Right. So this is Anthony's interview from top to bottom. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Brilliant. Now I'm going to bring in the podcast intro. So let me do a control O. I'm going to open another file. Open. Name. Folder. Ruffer. Show. Closing. Three. Show intro. Dot. Show intro. Now, this is the show intro. This is the little intro bit with music. I, I want to just talk for a sec here about managing mixing and music. I'm lucky that I have a hardware mixer. If I didn't, I could record my voiceovers and then mix the music underneath them. I personally find this really difficult to do because you kind of need to be in the zone with the music behind you so that you can get your timing just spot on. That's not to say that it's not possible. And if you don't have a mixer, this shouldn't put you off doing it. And we'll be doing a little bit of mixing in a second anyway. But just it's worth knowing. It's worth knowing that. So here's the show opener. Three, two, one. So we obviously need to cut that out. So I'm just going to go left arrow a little bit. And I'm going to press Control Shift Home, and I'm going to delete from that play. point, and I'm going to play. Okay, that's the music. Now I'm not going to go through. There's a there's a there's a, an intro of about. Uh, well, let's see how long it is actually. Blank. Stop zero zero colon zero two colon three seven point four two two. There's a show intro of about two minutes, two point seven, two minutes seven seconds, I think. So let me just go back a little bit. Yo at Aventido. If you remember last, always enjoy catching up with Anthony. He's a great guy, and he's join he joins us today. Anthony, welcome to the show. Brilliant to have you here. Now, I did that intro afterwards. That's the intro I want to use. And as you've seen, Anthony's file, which which which, which we've edited, is ready, and yeah. he will say, "Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here." Listen. Great. So now we need to add him to our intro file. We need to mix it in. So I'm simply going to select the entire audio here, select all, control A, copy to clipboard with control C, control and tab show intro to my show intro document and just go to the end here. Hi, and he's join he joins us today. Anthony, welcome to the show. Brilliant to have you here. I'm just going to pause that and go back a little. The very end of the word here. Now I'm going to mix Anthony into this file, and I'm going to press the letter X to open the mix paste option. Mix dialog DBDB clipboard volume colon up down slider seventy five percent. So seventy five percent is zero dB, which is the sort of regular volume, I suppose. So we want in this case we don't want mixing. We don't want Anthony to be lower, or we don't want me to be louder. We want the the mix to be dead on. So we want this to be seventy five, and I'm going to hit the tab key. Edit. Destination volume colon up down slider sixty three percent. That needs to be moved. Sixty five six 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 seven seventy one set seventy three seventy five percent. Okay, and I'm going to tab again. Edit plus zero point zero zero zero. So that's the that's the zero dB. Destination dip slash rise time left parent for voiceovers right parent colon edit one point zero zero zero. Des destination I. dip rise time. This is to do with how the music will fade in. But in this case, we're not fading. We're just mix pasting. Period. So I'm just going to say zero because I don't want any dip rise. Negate the mi OK and button. I'm going to press OK. And you will, this will take a moment, but we'll hear a little beep when it's ready. Show intro dot wav star left pair and busy right pair. There we go. It's ready. So let's just go back a little bit. Is CEO at Aventido. If you remember last year, we saw catching up with Anthony. He's a great guy and he's join he joins us today. Anthony, welcome to the show. Brilliant to have you here. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. If anything, he came in a bit too quick because the rest of the interview is a bit, there's little tiny gaps because he was on a Zoom call. I'm probably going to leave it, to be honest. I could take it out, and maybe later on, when we're finished this, I will redo that mix. I don't know. But look, it's okay for the moment. Now we're going to do the final piece, and then we will stop.
for questions because I'm sure there are some queries people have. So I want to go back down now to the end of this file. Remember now this is um, Anthony's interview plus the intro, so it should be longer. Zero. Stop zero zero colon three two colon five zero point six. So it's thirty two minutes fifty seconds. Okay. Now we need to get our outro, the end of the show. So let me do this. Open another file. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll close. Anthony. I'll close Anthony because we don't need him anymore. Studio recorder dialogue. Save changes to Anthony. And I'm actually. I'm not going to save these because I've now embedded the changes into the podcast file, so it doesn't matter. No button. Anthony Ruck dot wild star show intro dot and I'm gonna now open the ending. Fold folder v show closing show in show closing now show closing dot wild. What show closing has is a piece of music and then the voiceover comes in at the end. So I'm just gonna go through the music for a sec. So what'll be happening here is the music will be playing and you'd hear me saying thanks Anthony and Anthony says it's great to be here, Stuart, you know, look after yourself, whatever. So we're just going to fast forward here a little bit. I want this music to fade. I want it to fade from the beginning up to this point. So I'm selecting from here back with the control shift and home. And I'm going to go to the process menu in Studio Recorder with Alt and P. Menu process norm and chain fade in. Ah. And I'm going to fade in and press enter. Leaving menus, show closing. Now, I actually think SoundForge does this kind of stuff better. So this is where I might go to SoundForge to do some of this tightening. But I think Studio Recorder will be okay. Let's play it. So it's fading in now. It's coming in gradually. And I'm going to keep it playing for a sec because I do need to check something. Okay, here's where we got to do a bit of maths. I want to mix this file into the podcast as my ending. But in order to do that, I have to create silence for the duration of the podcast in this file so that it will embed properly and play properly. So I need to know the length of the entire podcast file. Uh, and then I need to know the length of this piece of audio. So this piece of audio is stop zero zero colon zero zero colon one three point eight. So it's 13 seconds. And the podcast file is stop zero zero colon three two colon five zero uh, 50, 32, 50. So stop zero zero colon zero zero colon one three point 13 from 32, 50 is going to be 32, 37. We go for 3235, maybe just to 3236. So now I'm going to insert at the top of my ending file 32 minutes, 35 seconds of silence. Show intro dot wav star. And if this all sounds Show a bit uh, a bit crazy, Blank. it can be. Um, but let me just show you. So I'm at the top of my um, I'm at the top of my um, podcast um, ending file now and I'm going to go to the special menu menu special menu place to remove remove set mark, clear name mark, show mark titan titan clear uh, all marks bleep sorry control, this menu, might be in the process, process menu menu norm and norm insert silence dot. right apologies so what did we say 32 minutes 35 seconds we want leaving menus insert silence so I'm going to insert silence z3 Three zero colon. I'm going to insert thirty two colon two five uh, period five thirty five three colon three five period z, 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 blank. Insert thirty two minutes thirty two minutes thirty five seconds. Can't, okay. Show closing dot wav. Right, that's done. Now the final bit we're going to do is mix show opening, which includes the interview, in with show closing. So let's do this. Let's go back to show opening. Show intro dot wav. Show intro. Press Control and A. Press Control and C. Then go back to show closing. Show closing. Make sure we're at the top of the file Blank. and press the letter X. Mix dialogue. Now, in this instance, I do want to do mixing. Okay. My clipboard volume, which is um, Anthony Rook's interview, at clipboard volume, colon, up, down, slider, 75. is at 75%. That's where I need it to be because we need to be able to hear Anthony. But the music volume at the end, we need to have lower. Destination volume colon up down slider seventy. So let's put this down to a page down a few times. Six, 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 sixty-seven percent. 
Edit. Minus 6 point zero zero zero. Minus 6 dB. Maybe S once more. Maybe minus 7. 6 dB. Edit. Minus 7 point zero zero zero. And now let's tab once more. Destination dip slash rise time left parent for voiceovers right parent colon edit 0 0.000. Now I do need to change this because remember we st we took it off last time because we didn't want it, but we do want it this time. We want the music to fade up nicely as Anthony says goodbye to us. Okay, so let me just go here period, and period. change the zero to a zero. one. I think one second will give us a nice fade. Okay, but again, SoundForge in some respects. This is less accessible in SoundForge, but you do have more customization about how you do this. So I'm going to press OK here. It'll take a sec. We'll hear a little beep. Uh, there we go. Studio recorder has finished. Now I'm going to jump to the very end of this file and check the time. Stop zero zero colon three three colon three six point thirty three minutes thirty six seconds. Let's go back a bit and just hear the end of Anthony's piece. Arriving at this of our podcast. It, yeah, it's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the last 40 odd seconds of Anthony, okay? Okay, uh, listen, Anthony, it, it's been really great catching up with you. What a great way to start the next season of our podcast series. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay safe and stay well and keep in touch with us and we'll catch up with you again soon. I will do, Stuart. Thank you very much indeed for having me along and uh, everybody uh, take care, stay safe and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. I didn't time that, but he just hit the intro of the music. And I did not mean it to be that tight. So I'm pretty happy with that mix. So we have now made the Remote But Not Restricted podcast. And this is what you'll hear when we publish it next week. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about compression and finalizing the audio. So the audio is done now. It's been mixed. It's been edited. We've tightened all the things we need to tighten. Are we happy with it? Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I would probably go back and listen to it now, but then I would want to put it through what's called a compressor to kind of make it sound a little more punchy, make it sound a bit more, I don't know, just put a bit of oomph into it, I suppose. And that's a totally un untechnical description of compression. I know that um, Oren is on the call, I think, on, in the audience. He might describe compression a lot better. But to do compression, you can do it in, in um, Studio Recorder, but I bring this into SoundForge because I have for many years used a particular setting, compression setting for all my podcasts with a particular sound that I like that I do not have in Studio Recorder. So you use the tools that are available to you. This file will eventually end up in SoundForge, it will be compressed and then it'll be made into an MP3 and it'll be published. So the last thing that will happen to this file is it'll go into SoundForge. Um, and I will end my little piece by saying, doesn't matter what you have, use whatever audio um, application you have to do your audio, because as long as it sounds good, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're using, whether it's Goldwave or Reaper or um, Audacity or SoundForge or Studio From Recorder or, or, or anything else. Now, I've talked for an awful long time, and I'm very conscious for some people that might have been an awful lot of information, and it's really difficult sometimes to do this in, a, in, a, in an hour. I hope it gave you a sense of Studio Recorder. If anyone has particular questions now, we're very happy to take them, but I'm also happy to talk to anyone about Studio Recorder after the event. So I'm going to unshare my screen, and then I'm going to hand it back to Fanula. So thanks, Fanula. Not at all. Thanks, Stuart. That was fascinating from my point of view with zero experience um, of software like that. You made it look really easy. So uh, thanks for that. Um, I don't think we have any questions in the chat box yet, but if anyone has anything, either use the raise hand function or pop the question in there and I'll, I'll put it to Stuart if, you know, as he said, there was a lot of information covered there. So it might be something that you want to go over or check on. Uma, could I come just quickly in? It's the, the Scottish um, Stuart Great. here. Um, yep. um, Stuart, I, I, I'm not sure um, whether you, you said at the beginning, but when we were discussing this off air beforehand, um, just a, a, a quick thing on um, examples of when and when not to use Studio Recorder. So I use it um, for product projects I do. Um, so, you know, if it's a podcast or if I need to do some um, you know, basic spoken word audio editing. Um, it's, oh, and Jaws is 
shouting at me, sorry. Um, so it's ideal for that, but if you want to use it for anything high tech, um, so say you were, I don't know, maybe a, a DJ or a, um, you know, a, a very specialist, maybe audio producer, something like that, then you would need something much more high tech, I would say. So something like maybe um, Reaper, as Stuart mentioned earlier, maybe Goldwave, um, Soundforge, etc. But for what Studio Recorder does for, you know, very, very basic, simple and fantastic audio editing for speech and as Stuart correctly demonstrated as well, mixing um, pre-recorded tracks, it's absolutely ideal. So apologies if you, you mentioned that already, um, Stuart, but I just thought it was, um, you know, just a, a good point to bring up. No, absolutely, Stuart, and thank you. It's, it is a great point. And I mean, again, it's about finding the tools that work for you. And you're right about multi-track and about sort of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest somebody uses this to record music, but I, I really, really like it. And it's well worth every cent of the 200 yeah. US dollars I forked out yeah. for it. So um, I think there is two. We have Oren and uh, Adrian Picton, I think, has a hand raised as well. Um, so I'm I, sorry, um, Stuart. Sorry I'm, I'm, no, if I, and I made you the host again because I thought maybe uh, I'm not sure if you could see the raised hands. No, I, I'm missing the raised hands there. So sorry about that. Okay. I can, I can, um, I can. We can bring Oren in. So let me. Uh, right. Sorry. Let me just do this. Um, sorry. I'm just trying to. Unmute Oren. Oh, now I can't do it because I'm not the host anymore. Okay, well, I can unmute. I just can't see the raised hands for some right. reason. Okay, I can tell you whose hands are raised. I don't know yeah. why. That, Sorry, it might no, have been they were raised before we switched host. I think Fanula, that might be why. Uh, team effort, I'll unmute yeah. Oren. Sorry, Oren. <laughs> we'll get there. Now, Oren, should be good. Oren, you can describe what compression is. Give us the technical term as well. Should be able to unmute yourself, I think, Oren. Yeah, hopefully. Hello. There we go. Hi, Oren. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, first of all, <laughs> Stuart, I have to say that was a fantastic presentation. Uh, I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Check is in the post. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, can I ask two questions? Yeah. Um, one is related to the editing. When you were using the shift and right or left arrow to select the audio you wanted to, let's say, delete, yep. and you then decided, well, you were a little bit too, you'd, you'd selected a little bit too much, and you were using the left or right arrow to... Uh, Deselect or reselect the, the the audio. Were you also holding the shift key down? Were you holding the shift key down down all the time for that? Yeah. So I was yeah. holding the shift key down and I was arrowing back and forward to work out what I needed to select. And then I could release the shift key, press shift and space. My selection is still preserved. Ah. While I listen to what's selected, and then I can hold shift again to to tighten or widen it. Okay. Very good. Uh, that's brilliant. And the second question was. Are there any loudness normalization tools within Studio Recorder that you're aware um, of? Yeah, it does have, so it has normalization and it has compression. And to be very honest, I didn't look at either because I was sort of just using SoundForge to do that. Um, but it's something I, I, and there is a, a chapter about it in the manual. So um, I, I need to come back to that. There is a, a normalization um, feature in there, Oren, um, that I use um, quite a bit, but again, I'm using it for very, very basic um, audio um, editing. And one area I sometimes have a lot of problems with is that my volume is, is too low. And I've always found the organ, the, excuse me, the normalization features in that regard it's really, really helpful because it just goes through the whole document um, at the press of a couple of keystrokes and then it normalizes it up to as close to 0% um, as possible. Because as, as you know, obviously, if you go too high, um, you're going to get distortion, but you don't want it too low either. And I've always found 
that it works really well, but I know there are other people who don't like it. So um, just yeah. a, a quick point on that yeah. one. Um, yeah, uh, just to just to pick up on on your own point there, uh, Stuart. I actually produce a podcast and I'm using Reaper, but uh, my final editing uh, is done in Soundforge. So I'm hoping to be able to switch over to Studio Recorder because I'm finding some issues with with Soundforge. But I really find the demonstration that Stuart has done is, is fantastic because it's very it's, it seems to be a very fast product for just uh, trimming very quickly the bits that you want to, the bits of the podcast you want to get rid of, uh, not necessarily for fine tweaking, but uh, I really do, I really do like that that product. Uh, so I would do, a, I personally would probably do a, a render from Reaper into Studio Recorder and just top and tail uh, my podcast. So that's, I suppose that's where the workflow I would use. So I agree with you, use, I agree with both of you, use as many tools or as little tools as you need to get the job job done. Uh, did, did you want me to talk about something, Stuart? Uh, I was just going to ask you to give us a technical explanation of what, of what compression is rather than oh, putting oomph yeah. into something, which is what I said it was. <laughs> um, well, compression can be used in different ways. Um, but it's mainly to kind of squash what I would what I would term squash signals that um, you want to, you want to control the balance if you want to control the balance of audio. So you might find that uh, somebody is uh, that is peaking quite quite high at a at a certain threshold. Um, if you add in compression, let's say you might want to start compressing somebody's voice maybe at about uh, 20, 20 dB or, or thereabouts, you can then begin to compress the signal above 20 dBs to basically to your heart's content, but you want to put some kind of light compression so that the peaks don't sound um, as, as uh, offensive to the ear. So you're trying to bring the, the overall signal from the low end of your voice register to the high end of a voice register in between a kind of, a, let's say, a, maybe a, a green area um, so that the, there are no offending jumps in the audio, either at the low end of the register or the, or the high end of the register. And it can be used... It can be used in various ways. One of the most common ways, and that's why I was asking about loudness, one of the most common ways that compression can be used, and in my view, incorrectly for years, um, is compression can be used to make audio sound louder, but, but, but not as dynamic. And it's a trick that radio studios, uh, radio broadcasters use in order to make their radio station sound louder than their rivals um, and it's not really what compression was intended to do but it is one of the things that that was was, was sort of was found out fairly quickly by radio broadcasters uh, that if we make our sound bigger or, or uh, yeah bigger sounding in, in volume uh, but we don't actually need to increase the volume uh, then people will be more likely to listen to our radio station because it sounds louder uh, so I could I could talk about compression for ages, but uh, I don't no, want to bore your I don't want to no. bore your, uh, your 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 listeners. That's been great. I think it's interesting just to get the the kind of the, the technical view of it. So thanks for that, Orn. Yeah, thanks, William Orn. I do see <clears throat> see the raised hands now, Stuart. So oh, I will um, move on to Adrian. Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Adrian, you probably just need Hello, to mute can you yourself. hear me? Hi, we can hear you. How are you? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Fine, thank you. Hope you are too. Um, yeah, I um, I use Gold Wave, uh, and there are certainly some similarities in what you're saying. It's, uh, I think um, the studio recorder has got is slightly more accessible in some ways. Um, things like marking the um, area that you want to remove with brackets, that's the same in Gold Wave. The thing that I was quite surprised at um, was what you had to do to do that mix at the end there to record all that silence. You see, in Gold Wave, which was only about a third of the cost of this program, um, you go to the point where you want the music to start, and then you put in a... Um, you just need to put a start bracket in, because that makes a start marker, and then um, you can, um, you can uh, do a mix 
command there, control M to start the music at that point. Um, but there's also another way of um, doing it, which is where you have the music in first and you use the voiceover function and you put the you put the mark where you want the voice to come in over the music and you can do that way as well and you can set the levels. And what's really good in Goldbase is you can actually preview all that before you actually save it. So you can you can listen to make sure you've got it starting in the right place and the levels right and everything. Now is this software can can that not can it not do that? You know something, Adrian, you, you could be correct. It maybe it can. I, I have this workflow that I've used forever, you see, in my head. And I always did this in SoundForge and I've translated into Studio Recorder. It possibly can. One thing it doesn't do, though, and I'm glad you mentioned previewing, because in SoundForge, you can preview in Audacity, in Reaper, I'm sure, and um, in Goldwave, as, as you've just said. You can't preview things in Studio Recorder. So you have to apply them and then um, undo them if you don't like them. That's why I kept using that preview selection thing today to preview the edits. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Stuart, I don't know if you have any comments on that in relation to Goldwave, the mixing of, uh, like, do you do that? Were you, were you doing that with Studio Recorder at all? Um, no, as I say, I, I just use it for very, very basic um, functions and that's why I picked Studio Recorder over um, you know other things like Goldwave and things because it just uh, Goldwave and Reaper and other um, audio editors just had too many you know bells and whistles on yeah. them for me to be perfectly honest but again as we've reiterated many times in this this webinar at Sources for Courses it's it's what um, audio production tool or editing software suits you. So if you can get free trials of things like Studio Recorder, Audacity, um, I'm sure Reaper still has a, a and Goldwave have free um, software trials, etc. Try them all before you decide, you know, it's not one size fits all, it's what suits, you know, the individual. Absolutely. And, and, and as you correctly said earlier, it depends on what you're recording as well. And Studio Recorder is available. As, de um, as I said earlier, you can download it. You can do everything other than save, which is key, I suppose. But you can at least do everything that we did this morning with, you know, opening multiple files and pulling audio from one to another and even try mixing and hearing what it sounds like. You just can't save it. So definitely, definitely maybe it might be one, one way for people to try it. That's great. There's no more questions there in the chat, Stuart, or raised hands. So if anyone has anything. Yeah, if anyone else has any questions. The if you want to put up your hand, if you want to ask anything before we finish. Um, yeah, ju just, and I think I did say it says at the start, there, the studio recorder is available now for purchase on um, APH, uh, American Printing House dot, dot org. And there's a, there's a little, um, in their catalog, you can add it to your cart and you can buy it. So it's a lot easier to get it than it was uh, earlier on in the year. Yeah, and then once once you purchase it, Stuart, I think I'm right in saying they, they send you a license key through, don't they? Yeah, now they did, Stuart, back in the day. Yeah, exactly. I have a feeling now, at least what I when I looked at this yesterday on the catalog, it all seemed very automated. You add it to your cart and then you ah. process and apparently it will email you directly. So I think one of the things that happened to Studio Recorder is when they upgraded it last year, everybody wanted to buy it. And in particular, for those of us who are not in the US, it became quite difficult yeah. to get it. So I think they have made made that process a little bit easier. Well, that's good. So it's somewhat easier. Good. And, and the other thing just to say is we were using that today. And actually, Stuart and I were talking about this before the session. There aren't, we don't have any JAWS scripts. We were just using it out of the box. And you can see how accessible it is. And you could see how we could read key pieces of uh, I suppose, status that we would need, like the time and, and that, those kind of things as well. So I think that's, I think that's it, uh, Stuart and Fanula, and uh, thanks yeah. a million. Not at all, thanks Stuart, very interesting. Thanks everyone, and we're back in two weeks with a social hub, as Sam said, with Sunu, and we have a webinar Wednesday, next Wednesday, on the Braille Sense 6. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing all about that with uh, uh, Jenny Axler from Selvis. She'll be along to talk to us about that next week. Yep, thank you very much for a great demo, Stuart. And I will see yourself and probably others on the webinar. Um, I think it's next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Wednesday, outside, 2 p.m. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yep, that's it. So I'll see you guys then.
So happy Easter, everyone. Thanks, um, Stuart. And uh, Fanula, thanks for stepping in and helping out with the questions and answers as well. No problem. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Bye.